arrested this morning. Uh, he was brought in for processing. You are held in the highest regard of the state on the Supreme Court. We have no comment, thank you. This sectional sofa with a price tag of nearly $32,000. This cost taxpayers $7,500. To be clear, you did not select that couch. Absolutely outrageous. The answer is no. We've asked to take pictures of the desk and couch inside the state Supreme Court warehouse. Law Free's pattern of vehicle use continued, covering thousands of miles and thousands of dollars in this gas purchases. This idea that the powerful and the privileged and the wealthy and those folks in a particular position get off a little easier than those folks who don't have power, privilege, and wealth, that's completely unacceptable. Eyewitness News starts right now with special coverage of the West Virginia Supreme Court indictments. It's a story we broke here on Eyewitness News with bombshell developments today. Former Chief Justice of the State Supreme Court, Alan Loffrey, has been indicted in federal court on 22 charges, including 16 counts of mail fraud, two counts of wire fraud, one count of witness tampering, and three counts of making false statements to a federal agent. If convicted on all charges, Loffrey faces up to 395 years in prison and a more than $5 million fine. We have been tracking the trail of events leading up to Justice Loffrey's arrest, and we continue with team coverage tonight, beginning with Eyewitness News reporter Kenny Bass. Good evening, Kenny. Well, Rick, in the wake of our I-Team investigation, which began last November, the U.S. Attorney has unsealed that 22-count indictment against Supreme Court Justice Alan Loffrey. Breaking news on a historic verdict just handed down moments ago. The jury finding suspended West Virginia Supreme Court Justice Alan Loffrey guilty on 11 counts. Mr. Carr, do you have any comment today after the verdict? We have no comment. If it wasn't for this television station, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Period. However, in 1998, he was put on trial again, this time for murder. The outcome was a conviction and life sentence with no chance of ever getting out. For 35 years, Hannah has kept the secret of Leslie Marty's final resting place to himself. Repeated attempts by investigators to question Hannah and locate her remains have failed. But this spring brought a shocking development. Hannah's lawyer contacted Eyewitness News and said the inmate would reveal where he buried Leslie, but only in an interview with the I-Team. Well, we're here. We've been talking about this for several months, and, and you reached out to us and wanted to, to talk with us about some things. Um, uh, I got a lot of things I want to ask you, but I, the floor is yours to get started. Well, and, and the reason that, that I came to you initially was because of your fine investigative work with the I-Team on the uh, Supreme Court. And, uh, you know, uh, I've been trying to tell my story for 20 years. She also remembers watching her mother hide Aaliyah's body in the woods, a secret she was made to promise to never tell. She will be punished later, even after she dies. She'll, she'll see the creator and she will have to take for account everything that she has done. For more than five years, Destiny Cole lived in fear of her own mother. I saw her like react to different things and um, act different ways. It just, you knew what she was capable of doing. Capable of killing her own daughter and expecting two of her other children to suffer in silence. Out of all the water samples we gathered, during this investigation, whether it be the river, lake, creeks, or even the pools, by far, Four Pole Creek right here in Ritter Park is the dirtiest when it comes to E. coli. The team investigation that first started last month after the president of the Connaught Charleston Board of Health abruptly announced the controversial needle exchange program would not be returning no matter who was mayor. That announcement prompted several questions about motives and timing. We uncovered an email from Brenda Isaac seeming to imply that she made that announcement to help Democratic candidate Amy Goodwin in an upcoming public safety debate. And now, tonight, there are more emails. Eyewitness News reporter Kaylee Gunderson live now with the new emails that have been discovered that shine a brighter light on the politics but going on behind some of the decisions being made by the Board of Health. Yeah, guys, these emails go back eight months before the decision to end the needle exchange was made, but raise new questions regarding the board's president, Brenda Isaac, and policies she was potentially violating as an employee of Kennell County Schools. 
And as we continue to track your tax dollars, thousands of dollars in gift cards to Walmart, hair salons, even Victoria's Secret handed out to drug court participants. Tonight, the explanation behind the purchases and the change that's now coming from our investigation. In 2016 and 2017, West Virginia drug courts bought 529 gift cards, adding up to $105,094. We're not going to take it anymore. Teachers vowing not to take it. Schools closed in all 55 counties today as thousands of teachers flood the state capitol, making state history, demonstrating their continued dissatisfaction over pay and health insurance issues. And that is where we start right now at 6. Our Eyewitness News team has full coverage of the West Virginia teacher walkout with reaction from teachers, school workers, lawmakers, and parents. We begin with Eyewitness News anchor Whitney Wetzel, who is live tonight at the Capitol. And Whitney, the rain couldn't keep them away, packing the Capitol, and they're gearing up to do it all again tomorrow. Good morning, I'm Kenny Bass with Eyewitness News here in our Charleston studios with breaking news. The teacher strike is apparently coming to an end just announced moments ago in the conference committee between House of Delegates members and Senator, Senator Craig Blair. The West Virginia teacher strike is over. An emotional end for lawmakers and teachers to almost two weeks away from their classrooms. Gets a little emotion. <laughs> Means a lot here personally for me and my family. What the government did today to make teachers happy. This was his eighth visit to West Virginia since becoming president. Pretty remarkable when you think a state with just five electoral votes is getting so much attention from a sitting commander in chief. So I asked him what it was about that relationship that keeps him coming back. They're great people. They have a tremendous heart. They've been treated very unfairly. I've... That's the sound you want to hear. A rescue ending in elation. Video just into our newsroom where the days long search for three people stuck inside the Rock House Powelton mine down in Raleigh County has resulted in all three being found alive and happening right now. We are continuing to follow this breaking news where a standoff situation in Eastern Kanawha County has led to a massive fire. SWAT crews and firefighters both on scene now. It all started early this morning, though, after a shooting. I and we continue tonight with complete coverage from our eyewitness news team standing by with hundreds of supporters and protesters for the president's big arrival. Eyewitness News anchor Callie Cart is also there outside as the president is set for another rally in a state that supported him overwhelmingly back in 2016. Eyewitness News reporter Kenny Bass joining us now live with a follow-up to his continuing I-Team investigation. Kenny. Well, one Kanawha County official is not very happy with how RISE West Virginia has been conducting its business. Kanawha County Commission President Ken Carper has called on the legislature's leadership and the legislative auditor to conduct a full investigation into RISE West Virginia's handling of flood relief. A situation many are still in, including Schoolcraft's daughter who lives just next door. She's been waiting for help from RISE West Virginia while living in her damaged single wide trailer with eight children to raise and no running water. She said that she's going to put me in a double wide to fit eight kids and two adults, but here I am. Lively says each time she talks to a caseworker, there is a setback. You don't go and promise things to people who are desperate, struggling, almost dying from it. Back in early June, West Virginia Governor Jim Justice asked everyone to give him a month to get Rise West Virginia up and running the way the flood recovery program should have been running from the beginning. 42 days later, Eyewitness News reporter Kenny Bass checks in with National Guard Adjutant General James Hoyer about the progress Rise has made under the Guard's leadership and what still needs to be done. While it is not moving at light speed, as Governor Jim Justice claimed it would be by now, West Virginia National Guard Adjutant General James Hoyer says RISE West Virginia is moving forward, something that wasn't happening several weeks ago. RISE is moving effectively 
Uh, we use the term deliberate speed. Rise is dealing with 443 active homeowner cases involving reconstruction, rehabilitation, and mobile home units. Right now, a massive cleanup underway today in St. Albans. This is a bird's eye view from our Sky Team drone. It shows what the CSX train derailment looked like yesterday morning when it first happened. A total of 20 cars going off the tracks, causing a mangled mess. And this is what it looks like today. Mayor Danny Jones read the words of former Mayor Copenhaver when the Charleston Civic Center first opened. The people of every quarter of our state are cordially invited to share with us the use and enjoyment of the fruits of progress and development. Words General Manager John Robertson says still ring true. Continuing coverage of that massive fire in Putnam County. This is a view of the fire at a storage building that could be seen for miles in every direction before it was put out. An example of how enormous that is there and that is such a gigantic problem with those big boulders having crashed down that happened earlier this morning. Again, this is a live look from our Eyewitness News Sky Team drone for you above you can see the slide marks from the hillside where those boulders came down village of Pomeroy in Meigs County Ohio sits along the rising Ohio River we're able to give you this view with our exclusive eyewitness news sky team drone from this angle you can see how tucked away the business and shopping area is our weather team feels that the weather could especially be dangerous and or widespread we now have a storm team severe weather alert day in those instances, our studio lights will turn red, indicating that severe weather could be imminent. We'll also have special icons and graphics to give you a heads up, even days in advance if we feel that confident about a big weather event. Between our team coverage now, parts of Putnam County got hammered this afternoon. Eyewitness News reporter Bob Aaron is live in Hurricane right now where those fierce winds caused a lot of damage. Bob? Ended up flying over a house and landed in this tree here. Take a look at this video in Milton of the massive tree that snapped at the base and fell on top of this home. Hey Whitney, we just made it back into Charleston now. A lot of water on the roads, as we've been saying, the temperature dropping now. Ours says 46, so we have noticed a decrease since we first started at the top of our 5 o'clock show. And we welcome you back to South Charleston here. Beautiful shot of this great stadium on the campus of South Charleston High School, the new venue for the North South Classic here in 2018. A 7-7 game as we start the second quarter and Colby Brown shoots it out to Freddie Canary and Canary gathers it in and takes the football to the 27 yard line. It was once home to Saturday afternoon football games, but since the late 80s, they've been playing under the lights here at historic Joe Sawyer Field. And tonight it's the venue for our Wendy's Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week presented by Eyewitness Sports as the unbeaten Sissonville Indians host the Miners of Mingo Central who have won two in a row, both teams in the top 16. What can be done if you're mayor to, to keep that relationship going and maybe improve on some things? Well, sure, no question about it. Listen, I think that that any great administration uh, knows that there's always ways to improve. Uh, People are asking for more police protection and presence, so I completely supported the 10 new police officers that were hired, so that was the difference between us in the spring. Actually, it wasn't. The, what I said was that they can't solve every problem, and 10 new police officers can't take care of every single problem that we have. Eyewitness News reporter Leslie Rubin live in the newsroom now to open up the Fugitive Files. Leslie? Just takes one phone call from you right now to get a fugitive off the streets. We cannot do it without your help. Inside our newsroom, Canal County Sheriff's deputies and Charleston police are standing by ready to take your calls. That number to call right now, 1-888-720-TIPS. If you do call, you can always remain anonymous. Here's a look inside this week's Fugitive Files. Uh, the goal here, of course, is to fill up the truck with as many items as possible to be taken down to the Carolinas. Now, joining me is Jason Quintrell. He is the CEO of Union Mission. He's partnering with us with our Care for Carolina campaign. And Jason, just tell us, you have direct contacts with folks in North and South Carolina. He is here, Martin, he'll be calling the game tomorrow. Good to CJ see you guys. Harvey. Wednesday, we're going to be at, here at the Hurricane Walmart. And then on Friday, you can catch us at the Southridge Walmart with the bus. So come out, make a difference in the community and help us stuff the bus. Back to you, Jennifer. Our Feeding Families Food Drive has wrapped up for this year. A huge thank you to everyone who donated. We were able to feed families in need across our area thanks to your help. 
here's a look at some of your donations being given out today. Non-perishable food items that were gathered over the past few weeks were given out today at Mount Calvary Baptist Church. Look what they did. They brought all of these toys that were loaded in the back of a Ford truck uh, from their dealership. And that's, of course, Becky and Todd, Judy and Killian, Judy, their young son. Our sponsors this year have grown so much. We also have Fruth with their 19 different locations that you can drop off toys. The Huntington Mall, Calvin Broyles, uh, that's uh, also our, our Charleston and Huntington Studios. And also at the, uh, at the end of the week, we're going to be getting uh, a chance to talk to uh, Papa John's.